afternoon on this 8th, 19th day of April, the year 2018. Nice to have you aboard. Christopher Russo is along the way on a great Sirius XM 82 here on Mad Dog Unleashed. Bill, Eddie, Matt, Steve, uh, Colin Schmeling, the crew is in the house here today as we're talking about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. It's nice to have you with us. A lot to do. NFL schedule. Lots of little nuggets have been uh, percolating. We have a couple items for you which we'll give to you a little later on. I'm sure you hear it in an update. And I want to start there because I don't want to ruin it for the folks who want to watch it tonight at 8 o'clock uh, and get a little feel of it. And then uh, tomorrow or Monday, uh, hopefully tomorrow, Howard Katz uh, will break it down uh, right from the get-go and have some fun with that. Obviously, a little baseball today as the course of the day moves along. NHL playoffs will spend a minute or two on some of the games here tonight uh, with the Blue Jackets and the Capitals and the Red and the uh, Bruins and the Leafs. We'll spend some time on that. And then, of course, we'll begin the day here with the NBA and the Cavaliers in Game 2. First off, let's say this right out of the gate. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a lots of, well, big picture first. I, you know, I don't care if the Cavs were outplayed for 47 minutes and 58 seconds. I, I'm not interested. I'm not interested if the Cavs were lucky. I'm not interested if the Cavs did not deserve to win. I'm not interested if the referee blew calls. Bottom line is, yesterday, the Cavs won a game they had to have, and they're a game of peace. That's it. Simple as that. Everybody is trying to make such a big deal. All right, Oladipo had a chance to tie the game with a three with whatever it was, what, 25, 30 seconds ago? Uh, I'd have to look at the exact time. And he missed it. And he had a chance to tie it. I believe it may have been 197 at that time. May have been 97, 94. But whatever it was, it was right around that time of this final score uh, when he had a chance to make the three that went to tie the game. And he, he missed it. And he got a wide open look. And, you know, the Pacers throughout the whole game battled, battled, battled. I mean, give the Pacers credit. They were down early. LeBron has a dominant first quarter. They were murdered early in the game. And uh, the Pacers, as is, you know, NBA playoff game once, against, you know, a team that is not great defensively and Indiana's got a little life. You know, they're going to keep on working, working, working. And they, you know, did a good job last night of making the game competitive when they easily could have written the game off. Hey, you know what? We got our split. We're seeing Indianapolis. Uh, we lose tonight by 20. LeBron's too good. You know, this is a game he just refuses to lose. We're not going to get a look at it. So we'll see you on, uh, when is the next game? I think it's Friday night. We'll see you Friday night. At 7 o'clock. We'll see them. And the Pacers did not do that. So from that perspective, you know, all right, fine. You want to give Indiana credit, go right ahead. But I'm not going to read too much into the closeness of the game, too. Um, you know, there are certain games uh, where a team wins where you don't like. You don't like the body language. You know, you, you see things you don't particularly get that wrapped up in. Uh, and there's other games where a team gets blown out in a game, too, which makes you concerned. And that would be Wizards and T-Wolves for me. Uh, but I, I am not going to make a, you know, LeBron carried his team. We get that. LeBron was not going to be denied. We get that. Uh, and the Cavs, you know, do look a little vulnerable. I get that. And I'll worry about Toronto and down the road for Cleveland when they get there. The bottom line is, is that the Cavs last night played, you know, I wouldn't call it a must win because even if they lost, they would not be out of, they wouldn't have been out of the series. But I would have called that, you know, uh, a, a game that was, you know, probably the biggest game they've played, uh, you know, since the Golden State final last year, one of the games against the Warriors, game four or game three when Durant hit the shot. So from that standpoint, they responded. Other than that, I'm not going to read too much into the game. All right, yes, Cleveland, you would have liked to win the game a little more cleanly. You would have liked off that start and the leads that they had basically throughout the whole game. Uh, if not, I don't think they were tied once after the first 20 seconds. You would have liked the Cavaliers to not have to sweat the last five, six minutes. And the Indiana kept on coming and kept on coming and fell back and came again and fell back and fought back. You know, I, they wouldn't die. And I would have liked a more convincing performance of a Cavalier fan. But come Friday night, opening tip, that's all you care about. You won one, you get a split in Indiana, and then away you go. I mean, you know, you knew this series was going to be dangerous. I did. Indy, I was trying to get, I was trying to buy this series at plus 500. I couldn't find it. Couldn't get it anywhere. 
Uh, I mean, I knew this series would be dangerous. I saw Indiana late in the year. They were hungry and they looked good against Sacramento, a game they, you know, kind of needed and they played very efficiently. I know Oladipo has got a little chip on his shoulder. I love that Miles Turner. Uh, you know, I knew they beat him uh, four straight times in a regular year. I know this team was going to be a pain in the neck. I knew it. So uh, from that perspective, I thought this series could be a, a tricky one for Cleveland. And I still think it's going to be a tricky one. And I think, you know, it's got a good chance to go seven games. But, uh, you know, in a big scenario against this team that is not better than Cleveland, might be as good, but since they got LeBron, they're not better. Golden State's better. Right? Houston might be better. Uh, I buy that. But Indiana is not. But this series has a good chance to go seven games. But, again, if LeBron's on one team and, and he's got a home court two, you're not going to pick against him. So even if they lost the next two games in Indiana, I wouldn't rule them out coming back from 3-1 three, three, down to win a series. They did it against the Warriors, who were better than this team and Indiana, and the Warriors also had home court advantage. If you're down 3-1 in this case, if you're the Cavaliers, you only have to win one game on the road. You win game five and seven in your place, and you win a series. And he's done it before. So I I don't want to rule out under any circumstances Cleveland, even if they lost last night, of winning this series. Now, again, uh, I I think they'll lose another game. I I don't think they're going to win the series in five games. I'm not sure if they're consistent enough right now to go out there and win five in a row or win four in a row, as it turns out. Uh, But I do think the Cavs will probably figure out a way to win a long seven-game series. And I wouldn't even rule out Indiana in the seventh game in Cleveland. I wouldn't rule that out. But you got to take in, you have to take, obviously, LeBron in that scenario. So uh, last night was a, uh, it was obviously a, a win that the Cavaliers had to have. LeBron had an incredible game. He had a great first quarter. I mean, he refused to let his team lose last night. And that's what that game was all about. And he got the job done. Uh, you know, and Indiana uh, is a game team. Uh, you know, the, uh, Boganovich is good. Turner's good. Stevenson can be effective. Obviously, Oro Depot's good. Hollow, I mean, that, that, that team's a pain in the neck. That team's a pretty good team. I don't think they're great, but they're pretty good. And they'd be dangerous the rest of the series. I still think the Cavs are going to win. Even if they lost two straight in Indiana, I still think they're going to win the series. Uh, I 3-1 down. I wouldn't rule them out winning three in a row. Now, Indiana's best chance to win the series is to get game six in their building up 3-2. I mean, that's their best chance. Now, LeBron's won those kind of games before. He won a game six in Boston down three games or two. He had 45 points, if you remember correctly. So I would, And that was against Pierce, Garnett, Rondo, and Allen. Uh, I know he had Wade, and he had you know. I mean, he 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 had a you know he he was he had players, uh, Bosch. But I mean, still he won that game. Uh, so I wouldn't even, I would not even rule that out. Uh, but that is Indiana's probable best chance. Indiana's best chance is to get the three as quick as they can to give them multiple chances to close the Cavaliers out. If they get three chances to close them out, they might win one of those three games because the Cavs are erratic. If they get three chances. They could win a series. Two chances, you take it, but, you know, not necessarily. One chance, it'd be hard. You know, they were down 3-2, one game six, and I go to Cleveland for game seven, it'd be a hard game. But their game, and uh, Cleveland did what they had to do. That's the first thing. Second thing is, and this is all of Twitter rage. Now, this is one reason why I don't pay any attention to Twitter, because I I, I cannot deal with fans at 11 o'clock at night screaming and yelling left and right about Ali DeForce and her question to LeBron uh, about uh, Aaron Popovich, who passed away yesterday, and uh, sad note in the NBA, and you can tell it bothered everybody. Um, Pop is very popular, uh, deservedly so. He's a great, great coach. He's, he's, you know, listen, he can be uh, cranky, but I think everybody senses he's real. And uh, if Pop is real, and that's why people like him. He's real. And he's a good sportsman and all those kinds of things. Um, there's nothing not to like about Pop. And he's, he does it in San Antonio, Texas. Doesn't have a big ego. And this, you know, this hit home to the NBA. You could tell it bothered him. Um, I don't have, at the time that it occurred, and the question by DeForest, who's a seasoned, you know, sideline reporter, you know, does it college football and everything else for CBS. Seasoned. Married to Joe Smith, the pitcher, the, the sidearm relief pitcher, who I think now is on Houston. Uh, she, you know, she's pretty good and uh, she's got some experience. Um, at first, when I saw the question asked, I said to myself, boy, you know, hope I'm surprised she asked him that, uh, and caught him by complete surprise 
you know, after the game, he doesn't know what's going on. He's played all night. The announcement occurred during the game. Uh, what time did it occur? About 8.30 at night we heard the announcement. And then she popped that question on LeBron after he scores 40-something points and they win. Wow. Uh, that's a, uh, that, you know, that you can argue the ethics is the wrong word. You can argue the timing of that kind of question in that setting. But we learned later, and this is why Twitter, you can't pay attention to him. Uh, all the Twitter people out there who have nothing better to do than analyze all these games so Steve Torrey can read about it. Uh, the Twitter people there said, started to scream and yell, how could she ask that? Uh, you know, what, what a ridiculous thing to say. Yeah, that's insensitive, blah, blah, blah. Well, she did set up and she did prep LeBron and told him what occurred prior to him answering the question, which I did not realize. And I guess if you look at the tape again, you see that she's whispering in his head, in his ear. Now, I did not, uh, I did not see that. So I was not aware that she had given him sort of a heads up. And I guess she did. Well, once she gives him a heads up, she did nothing wrong. If if we are on today and, you know, she just asked LeBron that question, clear blue sky, you'd give her credit for, for eliciting that kind of response because we got a real emotional LeBron there. You'd be a little annoyed at her for, you know, not really giving LeBron a chance to digest it before he has to answer it. Uh, but you could understand it because LeBron is going to be asked the question in his press conference after the game, just like Billy Donovan was after they played last night and lost to Utah. He was asked about it in his press conference. LeBron is the face of the league. If this is Oladipo, it wouldn't be proper to ask the question. If this was uh, Kevin Love, it would not be proper to ask the question. LeBron is the face of the league. You know he and Popovich have a relationship. He's played against Popovich in what? Three finals, I believe it is. Uh, one and one, two he lost. So he's played against him in high profile games for a long time. They have a they have a little Olympic involvement. Popovich coaches now. LeBron played forever. You know there's a relationship there. And he is the face of the league. So he has to be asked a question. I would have preferred he get a heads up before he was asked it in that sort of setting. And Ali did the right thing by giving him a heads up. So I don't know what the big uproar is about LeBron. And LeBron did a good job after the game because he basically said what Ali said, that yes, she gave me a heads up. I knew the question was coming. So, And I knew about it before I answered it. Now, what the only issue I would have with the whole scenario, I would have liked LeBron to say... In his answer, yeah, you just told me that, Ali. Wow, I'm, you know, I do. Let us know that you were informed that his that Aaron Popovich passed away before you go into a long, you know, silence about it with the with, with the way he answered the question. Because the way uh, LeBron answered the question, it made me think that that was the first time he had heard about it, and obviously that's not the case. He had heard about it two or three or four minutes prior to that. I would have, I mean, it's just me. I would have liked to have, I would have liked to have realized and been told through his answer. Yeah, uh, Ali just told me, oh my gosh, that he was informed about it prior to answering the question just like that. Because my initial reaction was, boy, look at LeBron. He is shaken up here. Wow. He's done it, you know, emotional. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't quite know what to say. You know, give him credit. But he sort of knew about this two or three minutes beforehand. That's the only thing I would say about the whole scenario. Everything else, like, I have no problem with it. Face the league. He was aware of it. I have no problem with Allie asking the question. She didn't ask it first. She asked it last. No issues whatsoever. None. Zero. And Popovich is beloved. You got that last night. He's beloved in the NBA. I know there were a couple of Texas fans annoyed. They send things about Trump. That's Pop. You know, I'd rather have Pop not worry about that either. But that's Pop. Kerr, same thing. That's Pop. That's Kerr. Kerr has a right to say something. His father was assassinated at American University in Lebanon. So he has the right to say anything he wants about politics. Um, uh, you know, gun control and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Pop, you know, hates Trump. We all know about it. Uh, and so there's some Texas fans who don't like the idea that he's done that. But that's neither here nor there right now. Uh, not coaching tonight. Um, uh, and that will be an emotional game now tonight. The moment of silence. That will be an emotional game. I read all the quotes from the Spur players today. Ginobili, Parker, you know, good quotes. She was a second mom. This is a close organization. I don't know how we're going to play this game tonight. I mean, they did a good job with it. 
So this will be an emotional night. I think it's at 930 this game. This will be an emotional night tonight in San Antonio before the game. And, you know, Pop is beloved in the NBA, folks. It's all, so you learn that. Yeah, If you didn't know it, and you, sh- you should have, if you follow the NBA, he's beloved. You know, everybody knows. The best way to say it, as I said a minute ago, Pop is real. He is who he is. not a phony. And people like that. Plus, he's one. That helps. 18 after the hour, we continue. May I do a- 